Hello everyone, my name is Prasenjit. Welcome to another session. This is going to be very interesting. I'm going to discuss about live broadcast of hyperscale sporting events. Well, the T20 Cricket World Cup is happening in Dubai and I'm lucky enough to be a part of this event. So we are amongst the live broadcasters of the event, broadcasting over 20 plus countries in the Middle East and North Africa. So I'm going to be um, dealing with all this stuff and I'll be able to give you the insight of what happens behind the scenes in the server rooms uh, when you're going to broadcast a hyperscale event such as the T20 World Cup, which millions of people watch at real time. Now, there are millions of cricket fans around the world who are passionate for the game, but hardly a few thousands of them are lucky enough to catch the action live in a stadium. So uh, the rest of them would depend upon the live television coverage for the cricket match. So what goes behind the scenes? How does the live television coverage happen? So this uh, entire session will be broken down into various parts. In the first part, I'll uh, talk about how and what goes on in the stadium, like what goes on in the live action and then how is that broadcast transmitted back to the server rooms what processing takes place when we uh, talk about uh, a live video streaming. So what are the servers involved, services involved, how to do that in real time and so on. What are the different equipments involved? So we'll be discussing that in the second part. In the third part, we'll be discussing about the front end and the back end services that make it available on an OTT platform for live viewing. So we'll also discuss about the architecture and uh, what it takes to do a live broadcast of a cricketing event such as the T T20 World Cup. So, and in the final uh, uh, part, I'll be discussing about the challenges we faced and how we overcome them. So, it's going to be very interesting. Stay with me. So, let's get started. So, first of all, what is streaming and how does it work? Well, streaming is a method of watching videos or listening to audio content without the need to download the media files before watching. So it is different from on-demand movie watching where you can download that movie file and watch it in your laptops. So streaming would be happening real time. So the audio content or chunks would be streamed on to your devices and you would be watching them real time. Now, when you stream video and audio, the information travels in a stream of data from a server. The decoder, which is a standalone player or a plugin, works as a part of a web browser and the server information stream and the decoder then work together to allow you to watch live or pre-recorded broadcasts. Now, this is different from real-time playing. I'll tell you about it in a bit and explain you what a decoder is, how the stream works, and what is that server that streams. So we'll come into that. Before that, let's understand like what goes on in the field before we get that live stream in action. So in a live international T20 cricket tournament, um, there are over 30 cameras being used all over the stadium. And these cameras are placed in a particular locations um, and serve different purposes. I'll come to that in a bit. Now, what are the different types of cameras and uh, what are their applications? Now, there is one camera for outside broadcasting studio and there are about 12 cameras for coverage of the field play. There are about six Hawkeye cameras. There are about four run out uh, video capture cameras. There's uh, about two um, strike zone capture cameras. There are about four stumps cameras and one camera in the presentation area where you get a man of the match award and so on. So in total, that uh, amounts to uh, about 30 cameras. Now, what are these types of cameras and what is the function of each of these types? So the main camera is placed for cricket coverage on the center of the wicket. So the camera is at a distance of 90 to 110 meters from the center of the pitch. And the main camera should have a clear line of sight from a place of a faster baller starting the run up. and uh, up till the slip position fielders. So this camera will cover right from the baller's run up to the slip positions. And 
the strike zone cameras are located um, on the main camera platform and are aligned to the center line of the wicket in play. So that was about the main camera. Now, field cameras. Now, field cameras are portable cameras. Um, uh, they are used on the field before play uh, for the pitch report, toss win, interview of the captain player, commentators, and also for uh, post-match uh, presentation interviews. Now, slip cameras are in positioned immediately after the play uh, playing field perimeter rope uh, behind the playing perimeter fence, 30 to 35 meters anti-clockwise from the center line of the wicket on the north and the south sides of the field. The river slip cameras are positioned immediately after the uh, playing field rope and playing, fi um, uh, playing field perimeter rope at the clockwise limit of travel of sight boats, uh, both at the north and the south sides of the field. Now, apart from that, there are run-out cameras. Run-out cameras are used, which are known as the third umpire cameras, very crucial for decision making. And they are placed six to eight meters above ground level and 20 to 25 meters from the perimeter rope and the ground. These cameras are computerized cameras, not operated by humans. And uh, the final camera is placed for broadcasting purposes, controlled by an authentic director and producer for recording and distribution of cricket match activity. Now, that is about the run out cameras and brings us on to the Hawkeye cameras. Very interesting. Hawkeye cameras are computerized control cameras, uh, which are uh, about six high speed video cameras for transmission, 60 frames per second uh, to a computer to calculate the trajectory of the ball, um, uh, about uh, 1 billion equations can be calculated for each rally. The bounce of a ball um, to within 3 millimeters accuracy. And the Hawkeye is a revolutionary ball tracking system that enables channels for viewers to get more information about how players are really performing about each other in the middle. The uh, Hawkeye 6 strategically placed um, cameras are used to follow every ball in flight track it accurately from the moment it leaves the baller's hand and the um, uh, uh, till the time the batman uh, batsman hits it and uh, uh, till the ball goes out of sight so uh, these 3d images are processed according to the swing variable brown's trajectory and de deviations to determine what exactly the player is doing these are also used for third umpire decisions on lbws so hawkeye is very important for lbw decisions as well. So here you can see some uh, pictures about how LBW decisions are made um, using the Hawkeye cameras, line of sight, and the trajectory predictions. Well, <clears throat> that is about the cameras. Apart from that, there are other equipments like the sneakometer, which tells uh, whether the ball traveling um, uh, from the batsman touched the bat or the pad that's also required from certain third and third decisions uh, for caught behind and for LBWs. So this is about the equipments. Now, once the captures are made, what happens then? Now you have camera captures from different cameras. So how is that going to be broadcasted live? How is that going to be mixed up and provided for, for the viewers? And how is all that going to happen in real time? So stay tuned with me. I'll tell you more about what happens after the videos are captured real time in the camera. Music